Okay, this is how to get more work done in less time. The age old question, the ultimate question when it comes to studying. There is an immense amount of detail I can go into with this video or this topic in general, but I wanna focus on one thing in particular, and that is the concept of deep work, right? This is a concept invented by a man called Cal Newport. I'll get a book, one second. This book right here called Deep Work, I wonder if that's the right direction on the screen there, but that is the book, right? It's a very good read, but to be honest with you, I can summarize the lessons in this video here, right? What we typically do, right? The typical advice or the typical way of going about work is like this. <clears throat> so you might've heard of like things like Pomodoro, right? Which I think, if you've watched my channel, you wouldn't be surprised by this. Pomodoro is just complete and utter BS, right? It doesn't help you study, it's really, Breaking up your study session is the opposite of what you want to do, right? When you study for, you know, 25 minutes and a five minute break. If you don't know what a Pomodoro session is, that's the concept, right? You set a 25 minute timer and once that timer runs out, you give yourself a five minute break. And that means that you can, you know, you can continue working for a long period of time because you're giving yourself enough breaks of these five minute periods in between, right? It seems like a great concept, seems like it would work. Seems like, okay, I'm giving myself breaks, so therefore I can go for a longer period of time. <laughs> I like the attitude, okay? Kudos for imagining this up, but that's not how effective work gets done, right? The thing is, with our brains and the way it works, and I'm sure you've kind of experienced this in life, is that when we get distracted, if we pick up our phone, even within this kind of five minute period of time that we planned out, we pick up our phone and we see, you know, some cat meme or something like that, something funny, whatever, blah, 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 right? When we get back into work from that distraction, right? That distraction, that bit of playtime has some residual, um, oh, there's a word for this, I forgot what it was, but it's like residual information left in your brain, right? residual attention or something like that. It's, there's a phrase for it. It's called something, but I forget for just now. It's residual something, residual attention, let's call it, right? There's a residual attention when your brain's thinking about the last thing you did, like, oh, that cat meme, oh, let me think about that. Oh, I used to have a cat when I was a kid. And it just goes off on a trail in that direction. Even though you're trying to focus on your work, your brain's slightly distracted, right? And so what's the alternative here? So the problems with Pomodoro is the residual, we'll just call it attention. I think it's called attention, residual attention. It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm gonna to be kicking myself at the end of this video when I, when I find out what the answer is. Residual attention, right? So you're breaking your attention and you're, you're working at like, what this does to your brain power is that it limits your kind of ability to focus and to flow, right? That's the, the key target when we're doing work, when we're doing like, you know, deep work the whole point is to flow and with this we're not getting that we're not getting that flow because of course the residual retention makes it that way and i would estimate it feels like i've not i've not got any like stats on this but it feels like you're working at like 50 percent of what you're capable of doing right that's what i would describe it like having tried things like this out before before moving on to stuff i'm going to tell you now it felt like i was like 50 percent, or maybe even less than that less than 50 percent of my my brain's power to kind of do work in a moment of time, right? I maybe I would say even 25%, right? So a quarter or a half of my actual brain power would be being used or being like effectively used or put to use in this kind of method, right? That's why I don't agree with Pomodoro. That's why I don't agree with any kind of breaking in general, right? Pomodoro being an example. The alternative is called deep work. And what that means is working for long blocks of time. I'm talking like hours here, right? Typically like one hour or more, one hour plus. You can do two or three, like that's typically the amount that people recommend. You can work up to that. Obviously, if you're not used to working for that long a period of time, you can work up to that. So you can go from one to two to three. Some people even do four plus. And that is typically where people max out at four plus. Like work, I'm talking like working nonstop here. I'm not just, I'm not talking like, you know, working and like, oh, I'll just check the news for one second. I'm talking flat out for four hours, right? That's the max that a lot of people reach, right? You can go above that. I'm not going to tell you to like not work because the limit is four. 
you can go five, six, seven, even 12 hours. If you like check a few boxes that really need to be checked for this to be the, the case, right? If you have like food on the go, like you don't need to get up and go get food. If you have water beside you, if you love what you're doing, you have a passion for it and you just, you just really feel satisfied, satisfied being there, right? So you've got your food, you've got your basics, you've got your kind of nothing distracting you, basically. Not hunger, not thirst, not kind of anything that might be necessary for you to, you know, be able to carry on work, right? That's what you need to be the case. So love it and just have your basics sorted out. I guess that would be the, the checklist there. And for this to be the case, I went through this before in a previous video, very recently actually, you need a very distractionless environment. Distraction, is that even a word? Distractionless. Distractionless environment, right? So nothing distracting you. Put your phone away, charge it in the kitchen, put your laptop away if you're doing paperwork or recording a video or something like that. Do it so that, or do, sorry, do the work so that there's nothing distracting you. Even like close the curtains on the window or like go to a, there used to be rooms in our libraries at university, libraries, in the library at university, there were rooms, right? And the room was just like a walled off concrete brick thing where it was just one seat in there. One seat, one table, and you could just go in there and there was nothing. No windows, no nothing. Just concrete, four walls, that's it, right? It seems like a prison cell, but that's the idea. You're not distracted by anything on the outside world, right? I'm pretty sure you didn't even get any signal down there. So it was great, even if you had your phone with you, right? So something like that is ideal for this to go on, right? And then, yeah, I guess the rest of it is like about being able to focus and being able to create a zone. And that's kind of unique to each person, right? So that might include, you know, listening to like white noise or like having your coffee with you or, you know, having your food packed in Tupperware containers and having your water and having, you know, the right kind of clothes on. So like not too warm, not too cold. All these little things that you might not think about are great for this longer study period of time, right? So that's what I would recommend for the conditions of getting deep work done. And that's why, this is why it's better, because it's like a, that's the thing, when you when you kind of have that deep work flowing, right, that flow, it's like a freight train, right? You have that momentum going with you and it's just chugging along because you have that momentum and it's not stopping, right? That's another analogy I can bring to the Pomodoro technique is that every time you start that train going and then you just stop it, imagine how much momentum you have to just kill and then start up again, right? But with this deep work, the flow just keeps going, right? You can just, without the wall, keep going through and build up speed so there's more speed right? So you get to a level of focus. It's like if there was a graph of focus, the level of focus and the level of uh, general like effectiveness of your brain, right? You would ramp up slowly over time and then reach a, a pretty good point and then keep going like that, right? Whereas with Pomodoro, you'd reach 25 minutes and you just stop dead. You might even go through the bottom of the graph and have to keep coming back up here and then down here, and then up, and then down here, and then up, and then down. You see how less productive this is compared to the deep work run, right? This is deep work, this is Pomodoro, right? Pomodoro, bad, deep work, good, right? <laughs> Keep it very simple, okay? This is why, right? Imagine the momentum of the freight train, imagine the, the built up focus over time, right? The focus is on the y-axis here. This is what you need. This is how you get more work done less time. I know it seems like you're doing more work but you're just working in a way that's blocked out. So I recommend like four hours is like the, the ideal to aim for. Three is great. Most days at university, three would do me fine, right? Even right now, three is fine. If I get three, work, three hours of work done in a day, it's this kind of work, that's fine, right? I get a lot of work done that kind of time, right? So remember the freight train, remember the flow, remember this graph of building up focus over time and remember that's why 
it's better to do this kind of work than to do some awful, like pathetic Pomodoro style session, right? Because in the long run, the deep work, you'll spend far less time, right? Because the Pomodoro is far less efficient. You're gonna to have to spend loads of Pomodoro sessions to get the same amount of work done as you would with a deep work session, right? This is gold, right? This is like dirt, right? So you want gold, right? Even you have, if you have less of it, you don't want piles of dirt, you want gold. And so that's why deep work will be better for you to get more work done in less time. So I hope that helps. If you can bring a few of those concepts towards your study sessions and work sessions, they will definitely help you out. I can promise you that. But for now, thank you for watching and thank you for submitting questions. More to come. And if you want to submit questions, please do so in the link in below. The first link below in my community tab, it's free. So go comment any of your questions you want to and I'll answer them in one of these videos. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Nice.